Okay, so we are moving into the calming phase of this strength and conditioning yoga practice flow. Um, we're going to do some shoulder stand and plow towards the end of the practice and the relaxation could be just putting your legs up the wall as opposed to called the Priti Karani. So if you want to get some cushions and a blanket for the relaxation handy, that would be a good idea. But we're going to start from the mat um, into a reverse table. So we know table pose, we, are, we use table pose to get into our warriors earlier on. So in reverse table, we want the wrists underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath, or sorry, the feet underneath the knees and spread out through your fingers, spread out through the toes, share weight between the heels, the balls of the feet and the toes in your feet. And when you're ready, on an inhale, lift up the hips, roll the shoulders back and lengthen through the front of the neck. So we're going to press down into the soles of the feet and through the palms of the hands and soften and release any tension from your neck, just let it roll back. It will be supported by your trapezius muscles, so you don't have to worry. If that feels very uncomfortable, then you might want to reposition your shoulders a little bit, lifting through the thoracic spine a little bit more. And you should have a clear view of the wall behind you, or at the very least the ceiling. So about five breaths here. So we're going to come out, and as you breathe out, sink the hips towards the heels. And then we're going to lower the elbows down to the floor, spread out into the fingers again. This time we're aiming for the elbows to be underneath the shoulders, spread out through the fingers, press down through the soles of the feet. And on an in-breath, lift just your backside, feeling the backside, you're hovering above the floor. Press down through the palms of the hands again, and with the next breath in, um, press down more into the feet to lift the hips, and again we can release any tension from the neck, uh, lengthen through the front of the neck, send the chin up and back. So we want to get as much height between your backside and the floor as you can, pressing down through the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. But do check to make sure that the knees don't fall out to the sides. So we want to keep the knees tracking in line with the hips, tracking in line with the heels. And come on, out of that one, we drop the backside down towards the heels again. And now lower the shoulders to the floor. And we're into bridge pose. So we want to close in that knee joint as fully as you can. Draw the heels in towards your backside. Keep the feet hip width apart. See if you can touch your heels now. Don't worry if you can't. It's not a problem one way or the other. We're going to do two types of bridge, a moving bridge and a static bridge. So I think we'll start with the static one. Breathe in, press down into the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. Lift up just your backside, sending the tailbone up towards the knees. And then with the next breath in, lift the hips. Send your belly button up towards the ceiling. If you can hold on to your ankles, do. Don't worry if you can't. Give your hands something to do. Interlink the fingers. And try to lower your little fingers down towards the floor so the knuckles are pointing to the space in between your feet. And we want to lift the hips as high as you can. Really press down through the soles of your feet. So the chest moves up towards your chin. So from here, we can support the back. Support your back by placing your hands in towards your sacrum and your thumbs will come out towards the waist. And then we want to step the left foot in and on an in-breath, extend the knee and the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. And then on an out breath, draw the knee down. So that was a very long breath, wasn't it? I'm gonna try it on the other side now. This is the in breath, and this is the out breath. Okay, so we could move up into shoulder stand from here, 
and then lift it up into your shoulder stand. But if you are new to shoulder stand, I suggest you use a prop. So you could use the wall or you could use your sofa or you know uh, uh, something that's stable and sturdy is not going to um, roll away on you. And also the cushions might be handy. So we'll get in close to our whatever wall or stable solid support. We want it to be at least hip high. Okay. And then make sure that your backside is connected to the, the support and you can reach out and touch the skirting board maybe or grip the sofa or the chair or be able to at the very least touch it. And then we will get the cushions just to elevate your hips a little bit. Um, so your the bony parts of your hips and your pelvis aren't um, digging into the ground. And so then from here, press with your feet against the support and lift up the hips. So that might be as far as you want to go in, in shoulder stand, which is fine because your heart is now higher than your head and you're getting all the benefits of an inversion. Of course, I should say at this stage, if you suffer from high blood pressure or you have any problems with your eyesight, detached retina or anything like that, don't do shoulder stand. High blood pressure, it's, it's counterindicated. If you've got high blood pressure, don't do shoulder stand. The, all you want to do is this, this partial inversion, which is what we'll do for relaxing. But if you have normal blood pressure, then shoulder stand's no problem. So we lift up into shoulder stand and support your back around your waist, you know, around the lumbar spine or the hips. When you're starting in shoulder stand, you might want to support the hip girdle. So your thumbs will be around the front of your hips and your fingers will be moving towards your sacrum. And let go one foot at a time. Be in no rush to get here. Alignment in shoulder stand is a straight line eventually between shoulders, hips, knees and heels. So you need to move the heels back and the hips forward and think about rolling your outer thighs in and then let the sole of your feet um, move up towards the ceiling. So eight breaths, shoulder stand. I say this is four. say that's eight. So we're aiming to slow down the breaths now. Coming into plow pose next we're going to drop the knees down towards the forehead and if that feels comfortable enough then straighten out the legs and let the feet fall towards the floor. Don't be surprised if your feet don't find the floor the first time you do plow. Mine certainly didn't. So what you could do is keep your knees on your forehead, cross your feet at the ankles and keep supporting your back. But eventually in plow, you will need to support your back so you can move back into that uh, interlinked fingers shape that we did in bridge. We curl the toes under and we stretch into the heels. We're aiming to have a, a straight line between the shoulders and the hips and then a diagonal line between the hips, knees and heels. Oh yeah, there's easy plow as well, which is very nice. You just kind of curve. You make this nice C shape with your back and extend your hands towards your feet. So plow pose, eight breaths. So I'd say we've done eight. So we can come out. Um, find your support again, be able to touch it. Draw the knees down in towards your forehead and as you breathe out, roll your back down onto the floor and then we're going to relax right here. So cushions again are very nice. Use your cushions to elevate your hips 
a little bit higher than your shoulders and stay here. So in um, Vipriti Karani, or legs up the wall, and or sofa, you can be like this, or you can bring the soles of the feet together and let your heels move down towards your uh, groin. Hands can be at the chest or the heart center, just flopped out on either side, or extended above, whichever feels nice. And that's the work of the pos of all of our um, asana. This is our last asana, last posture. Let your breath slow down, deepen, lengthen. So if you want to get a blanket or put on some socks or a longer sleeve top, you could do that and just come back into your relaxing pose. If Vipariti Karani doesn't suit you, and I appreciate it doesn't suit everybody, then come into corpse pose or sit for some relaxation. I need to kind of sit. In whatever pose suits you best. The idea of relaxing in yoga is that you are absorbing all of the energy of your practice. You're bringing it back, back in. You spent a lot of energy out during asana practice with your exhales. As you sit or lie in relaxation, you absorb the energy back in with your inhalations. So let your breath slow down, deepen, lengthen, soften, relax, let go. Let the floor take your body's weight. Let your attention rest on the action of breathing, just breathing in and out. Feel the action of breathing, the mechanism of your breath. Feel how your ribcage expands as you breathe in and relaxes as you breathe out. Feel the air around you, especially as it enters your body through the nose and as it leaves your body through the nose. Experience the temperature and texture of the air you breathe in. Let your body soften, and relax and let go. You deepen the breath. Rest in this present moment, because it's the only one you actually have. Give thanks for your body, how obedient it is, how responsive it is, how capable it is to do the work you've just asked of it. You say thank you. Thank you strong legs, thank you strong arms, thank you strong heart and lungs and gut. And most of all, thank you, Head. And that's the end of the practice. You breathe in, raise the arms, let them touch above the head. And as you breathe out, stop at the eyebrow center and offer peace to your thoughts. And stop at the lips and offer truth your lips and stop at the heart center and offer love to your heart. I'm chanting.